Hello and welcome to another Sotten Brain Hub video. My name is Charlie and today I'll be talking you through the neuro complications of syphilis. So before we start, let's remind ourselves what syphilis is. Syphilis is a sexually transmitted infection caused by the bacterium Treponema pallidum. The infection develops in stages, primary, secondary, latent and tertiary. Each stage has different signs and symptoms. Syphilis can be treated and controlled with benzathine penicillin, also known as Benpen. In this video, we will explore the many neurological complications associated with neurosyphilis. We will discuss their definitions, pathogenesis and clinical presentations. Firstly, neurosyphilis in general is when the infection affects the meninges, the brain itself or the spinal cord. It is quite rare now due to advancements in safe sex practices, screening and treatment options, but can still develop if syphilis is left untreated. There are five main types of neurosyphilis. Firstly, asymptomatic neurosyphilis, when neurosyphilis is present but there are no signs or symptoms. Secondly, meningeal syphilis, Usually in the first few weeks to years of a syphilis infection, this can present with symptoms similar to any other meningeal infection, namely a headache, stiff neck, nausea and vomiting. Next we have meningiovascular syphilis. This presents like meningeal syphilis but with the addition of vascular complications such as acute strokes. Fourthly, we have general paresis, which often presents after around three years of infection. Patients have general paresis alongside personality changes. And finally, tabes dorsalis which is characterized by lower limb and abdomen pains, weak muscle contraction, and altered bladder function, as well as hyperreflexia and ataxia. This often occurs after around five years. So let's get into it and start looking at the different manifestations of neurosyphilis. We must first consider Treponema pallidum itself. This is the causative spirochete bacterium of syphilis. It enters the body through sexual contact or mucous membrane exposure. This leads to systemic infection if not treated. The initial stage presents with a painless sore or rash. Early syphilis is treated with penicillin, while late syphilis requires more extended treatment. Firstly, we have cerebral syphilitic gumma. This is a granulomatous inflammatory lesion that can occur in various tissues, including in the central nervous system. These are inflammatory responses caused by the invasion of T. pallidum into the central nervous system. They present as mass lesions leading to neurological symptoms including seizures, altered mental status and cranial nerve palsies. Treatment involves high dose intravenous penicillin which can help resolve the gumma and alleviate neurological symptoms. The next one is quite a mouthful. It's focal hypertrophic pachymeningitis which is a rare inflammation of the meninges. More specifically it is diffuse inflammation that causes thickening of the dura mater. It can involve the dura mater or the brain itself and or the spinal cord. Corticosteroids can be used to reduce this inflammation. Let's now think about meningiovascular syphilis. This is a manifestation of neurosyphilis caused by an inflammatory obliterating endartritis of the blood vessels supplying the leptomeninges. Patients may experience strokes, recurrent strokes, headaches and other vascular neurological symptoms. Next up we have otosyphilis. This refers to an infection of the vestibular cochlear system. Its presentation typically starts with sensorineural hearing loss, tinnitus and or vertigo. This can even cause permanent hearing loss and may be one of the first presentations of neurosyphilis. Now, moving from the ears to the eyes, we have ocular syphilis. This is an inflammation of the eye caused by syphilis. Ocular syphilis can involve almost any structure in the eye and can present with a range of visual field defects. Most commonly, it causes posterior uveitis and panuveitis. And last but not least, we have Tabes dorsalis. This is a late stage neurosyphilis condition affecting the spinal cord, more specifically, the dorsal columns of the spinal cord. It results from damage to these dorsal columns due to the T. pallidum infection. It can also result in ataxia, a loss of coordination, sharp pain, Charcot joints, hyperreflexia, ataxin, and argyl Roberts pupils. This is due to the slow degeneration of the nerve cells and fibers. Thank you so much for watching, and be sure to check out the rest of our videos on the Sutton Brain Hub YouTube channel.
Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help explain the mysteries of the brain. Thank you.